All right, I'm here with Brett Garfinkel today. He is the CEO and co-founder of Sila. You had recently written some uh, blog posts that I read around uh, 2018 and what to expect in influencer marketing. What do you think is the biggest threat for influencer marketing um, and some of the challenges that CMOs are facing that need to be solved in order to make this really a, a business that can continue to grow uh, for brands and, and the best way for them to measure their ROI? Um, greatest threat, it's third party validation. It's standardized measurement and reporting because this affects all the other aspects of all the stories we keep hearing about um, fake followers, uh, true ROI, um, uh, various contradicting forms of measurement. Um, each one of them has their own little story, but they all link together to this one overarching theme that every other form of legitimate media has a third party validation, standardized measurement and reporting source, except for influencer marketing. So if we are moving from being experimental to legitimate, then we should look like all the other legitimate forms of media. And so I think this is, uh, you're hearing the CMOs speak about holding uh, budgets and uh, the bubble bursting concept I think it's all centered around that. It's validation, it's verification, brand safety. Yeah, as someone, uh, you know, myself has been in the influencer marketing space and worked on a lot of them, big believer in the power of storytelling and influencer marketing can absolutely work. Um, and there's a lot of different strategies within there. But to your point, uh, measurement is one of the biggest key problems. And, uh, and working in brands, I would see uh, multiple reports being sent around the building in a sense, all different numbers coming from a variety of what I would say are providers, whether that's internally, the platforms themselves, the creators themselves. And so talk a little bit about what the problem, that problem, but also what Silo is solving for brands and CMOs can truly understand really in one, uh, one view, what's working, what's not, and, and how that leads into what you guys call the Silo score. Yeah, it, you know, first let's understand the space. Um, we didn't do anything wrong. This happened so fast. It was only a few years ago where 90% of the videos consumed were on one platform, YouTube. Next thing you know, here's Instagram, there's Twitter, you're watching video on Periscope, and then you have Facebook as well. And it can become quite overwhelming for any brand marketer now. Um, there's so many influencers out there. So the next step where people came in to help navigate, they created matching algorithms. I will help you find your correct uh, influencer to work with, and I'll support that with certain analytics. It became essentially kids grading their own homework, okay? And I ran sales for many, many years, and what I've learned is I want to keep your business. That's how I maintain my job. I have a quota and to keep the business and to grow the business, I want to hand over positive results. And here you are a brand marketer in the center of all this. You're a CMO and now you're receiving analytics from all different platforms, uh, all different silos, if you will, uh, different optimization tools, monetization practices. It could make your head spin right off. And um, what ended up happening is a lot of companies came forth and said, well, we'll help you navigate. I will point you in the right direction. I use IBM Watson or, or this certain tool that we've created. And they're all telling you and they do it. And at the end, did it work? And, and we don't know unless you have a standardized measurement that's unbiased, that doesn't have a horse in the race to come in and explain this and let people see and provide the transparency that the industry has lacked. If we have the transparency, you can create benchmarks and we know what's working, what's not working. And when you know this, you can optimize. You're a CMO, that, that's a lot of what you're, you're looking for. You want the validation of the numbers. So what are some of the brands that you guys have worked with around campaigns to actually activate this in, in the real world? You know, it, we, we started with PepsiCo, it's been wonderful. Uh, working with Mountain Dew specifically, and we built it around the relationship we had with them uh, as they were the first uh, brand to do a, a brand-led creator network. And we were able to understand, I, I use this line, it's similar to Moneyball 
meets influencer marketing. Let the data show you the way. And what we learned was that, first of all, you can't treat influencer marketing like um, buying media, a commercial on a TV show or a, a, a magazine ad, if you will. There's a relationship that's taking place here. And you as a brand are entering a relationship that's already been established. But this relationship is not typically just on one subject matter. They're covering a lot of subject matters. And what we're able to see is when that brand enters that relationship, was there a lift or was there a drop off? And we tested out with, with PepsiCo, uh, with, with Mountain Dew, and we were able to better understand the type of content that was working and on which platform. And it allowed them to take a step back and reinvest more money. And at the end of the day, the problem with this space is there's too many one-offs. That doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help the creator. It doesn't help the brand. What the creator wants, ideally, is to find a good brand partner that is accepted by their audience uh, favorably. And that brand then invests in the creator. So we're actually bringing what Nielsen did. It helps content strategy, but it also helps brands have a better idea of what's working and what's not working. Right. And, and, I, and I think it, going back to that point, we've, we've seen a lot of, uh, you know, everyone's providing a massive amount of data. And one of the other challenges that CMOs have is how do you uh, interpret and handle all that data into what's working and what's not. And, that, and I think that's also part of what Silo is doing, um, is providing that, but then also just quickly uh, highlight wh what the Silo score is and how that's used to evaluate uh, what brands should be doing in influencer marketing space. Sure, so you, you have to come up with a score. Is it a letter grade, is it a number? And um, the way we looked at it is we took every form of data you could possibly get when they authenticate it. It's the most comprehensive data set. And we weigh all forms of engagement, consumption, and reach. This is not just public data, this is private data. But all of the weighing was done by brand marketers, by CMOs, who came in and looked at it and said, this is more important than this for me. And when we all put together, you could see, think of yourself, everything you talk about, if you talk about um, fashion, and you do it 30 times, and you apply a score to it the way your audience can engage, can view, can consume it, one will be your best, one will be your worst, and you will have an average. Okay, and then the brand could enter the conversation and see if they got the lifts or not. If there's a response, a favorable response to this. The scoring system right now is set up that way. It's relative to each creator. As it grows, we'll make it relative to the marketplace. So we'll be able to see what the average scores on YouTube for fashion is compared to the average scores of on Instagram to when creators are talking about family. And you could see when you're that brand, and you enter that, how to compare to branded content to native content. So we are applying every data point that all the brand marketers we met with over the past year and a half told us were of value to them. And to really get a better understanding of that relationship between them and their audience. And take it back to this CMO again. Try to imagine how much content they're overseeing. To not really know what's working, I, I don't see how we can move this forward. So we have to establish benchmarks for them to be able to have a better, you know, an understanding of where to reinvest their dollars. Yeah, absolutely. That benchmark is that important thing because you're really starting uh, such a new industry in a sense. Uh, you're really starting from uh, nothing. So where can people go right now to find more information about what the silo platform does? Go to uh, meetsilo.com and absolutely check us out on LinkedIn. We do tons of blog posts, uh, talk about the industry, a lot of publishing stories that we have seen from the data that we're compiling. Uh, check it out, absolutely. All right, great. Thanks for your time today, and we'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it.